الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد ايها الاحباب يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد first and foremost my brothers and sisters we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his acceptance and mercy and rahma upon each and every one of those brothers and sisters who observe the day the time and the hour of yawmul jum'ah and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our goodness allahumma amin secondly i'd also like to begin and uh, make dua of shifa that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his cure and his mercy upon our dear sister yasmin our sister fatima our brother shamir and all of the brothers and sisters who are suffering may allah azza wa jal shower upon each and every one of them his cure and his protection allahumma amin ayyuhal ahbab today what i'd like to do is share with you two verses of surah al-baqarah these are verses that we are all accustomed to and we've heard many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse number 155 and 156 of Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدُ One of the greatest challenges that you and I as human beings, as Muslims that we face in life is somehow confronting and even at times accepting the reality of struggle and hardship. All of us as human beings, we look and strive to achieve a sense of happiness and contentment and try to sustain that for as long as possible. But sometimes there are things that you're going to be confronted with and faced with that you simply have no control over. You'll wake up one day and go through your daily routine, but at some point, Allah Azza wa Jal sends a struggle or a test for you and you stand there and you think to yourself, how come I couldn't see this coming to me? What did I do or not do to deserve this? And so the answers to all of these questions lies throughout the Qur'an but especially in these two verses. The first thing that I want to mention is that Surah Al-Baqarah is a Madani Surah. So keep in mind that the audience of this surah are people who already believe in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they already have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah azza wa jal tells the people of Medina, "Wala nablu wannakum." Indeed there will come a severe trial or test for you. In Arabic, there are several words to describe testing someone. There's imtihanun, there's ikhtibarun, and then the most severe of them is ibtilaun, which is the root word of walanabluwannakum. Ibtila is the kind of test that you're put through that you can't do anything about. You can't say to yourself, well, had I studied, or had I focused, or had I done this or that, I may have potentially avoided this test. Ibtila'un is a test that is destined for you regardless what choices you make in life, you simply can't avoid. Arabic students, this verb has a heavy noon at the end. And this voon, what we call in uh, this this uh, uh, noon that we call in Arabic, it's called noon al mushaddada. And what that means that when you add a heavy noon to a verb in Arabic, there's a there's a sense of emphasis, ta'kid. 
Allah is affirming that regardless what, don't you dare doubt for a moment that hardship and test and difficulty will come your way. In other parts of the Qur'an, Allah gives us the wisdom why. And sometimes He tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will test us to see which one of you will perform righteous deeds. Allah doesn't say which one will perform more deeds than the other. It's, it's restricted to righteousness, which means there's a sense of sincerity and devotion. Allah wants to see how devoted are you in worshipping Him. It's easy to do it in good times. Well, let's see if you can do it through rough times. The prophets and the messengers, all of them had to deal with this in a more severe manner than any one of us could imagine. And of them, our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his entire biography is filled with the hardships and the tests that Allah Azza wa Jal put him through in order to complete his message. So Allah Azza wa Jal speaks to all of us and says, look, I'm going to test you. And there are five categories in the Qur'an that Allah mentions, test will come. Number one, Allah Azza wa Jal says, بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ A portion of, number one, fear. Khawf is one of about 11 or 12 terms in the Qur'an that describe being afraid of something. There are about 10 or 12 words in the Qur'an that describe fear. Khawf specifically is the initial or the immediate fear that one responds in the state of fear. So for example, if there was a tiger or a lion that came right in front of you, that immediate reaction for some people, they'll stand still, they become paralyzed, they can't move. For others, they would scream and shout for help. So that immediate reaction, that's called khawf. And that's serious. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you and I that number one, there will come a time in your life where you will be put in a state of fear to such a degree that when it confronts you, you'll have an immediate reaction. So in other words, when you see it, you will recognize it. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us strength. Second, as Allah mentions in this ayah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ And number two, وَالْجُورِ And hunger. Now often when people think about that Allah will test you in hunger, most of the time it's restricted that Allah will take away food, will take away His risk from you. It's not restricted to that. You see one thing when you're looking at verses in the Qur'an, try not to look at it as a black and white print. Try to really stop for a moment and think deeply Tadabbur, really reflect on how these verses speak to you and how they're relevant in your life. When Allah says that He'll test you with food, that test could also mean for some of us that business is slow, work is slow, bills start piling up, and so that morning coffee that you're accustomed to, you can't have it anymore. Certain items that you, pur that you purchase in the grocery store that are a little more expensive than others, you can't purchase them anymore. You're restricted to a degree. Why? Because Allah is testing you with food. I don't need to talk about wasting food, that's a separate topic. But think about simple things that you and I do in our homes. Some may find like there's a little bit of food at the bottom of the pot, and you throw that away, that's your test. You'll see the bag of milk, the, 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 the bottle of orange juice, there's a little bit left at the bottom and you throw away the bottle, that's your test. Allah is putting food in front of you and He's testing you with it. Because Allah tells us in the last verse in Surah At-Takathur, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Indeed, there will come a time where Allah will test you of all the blessings that were given to you. Do you know how that verse was revealed? It was revealed when the Prophet was sitting with Al-Ayyub Al-Ansari, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum, and they were having a nice meal. There was a goat that was slaughtered and roasted and they were enjoying it. And the Prophet ﷺ looks at this food and he says, Call my daughter Fatima because she hasn't seen food like this in a long time. And then he looked at the rest of the companions and then he recited to them, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ 
When Allah Azzawajal told Adam and his wife Hawa, وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ He told Adam and his wife, both of you find peace, tranquility in Jannah. If you had the ability to tell someone who was going to enter paradise to enjoy something about Jannah, what's the first thing you would say to them? What would you tell somebody that you knew was going to enter Jannah? You would probably say to them, hey look, enjoy the fragrance of Jannah. Enjoy the beauty of Jannah. You want to know what Allah told Adam alayhi salam and his wife? He told both of them, وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا He said to both of them, when you both go in Jannah and you find peace and tranquility there, then the first thing I want you to do is enjoy the food. Go and eat. And the, and the verb that's used is رَغَدًا رَغَدًا رَغْدٌ literally means go and eat and don't think twice. Don't look at the calories, don't watch your weight, don't see if this is good for you or not. Just eat freely and comfortably as much as you want. What scholars took from that is one of the greatest blessings in Jannah is food. That's why in Islam there are so many rules of how we eat and drink. You sit down a certain way, you use your hand, you say Bismillah, there's a dua before eating, there's a dua after eating, and there, there, there are strict rules of how much you should eat, a certain part of your stomach should be left for water, for air, for comfort, and, and so on. Why? Because this is going to be one of the greatest blessings you're going to enjoy in the Akhirah, so take care of it now. May Allah Azzawajal give us strength. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ والجور. Number three, وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ And Allah will subtract some of your wealth. Listen to the wording of the ayah. Allah didn't say, وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الطَّعَامِ Allah says, I'm going to subtract some of your wealth. He didn't use نَقْس for food and fear. It was restricted just to wealth. Why? Scholars took the balagh or the eloquence of this ayah for tremendous benefit. They say that the reason why this additional word of subtraction is added to wealth is because a human being is never really poor. You always have blessings with you that you simply can't count. A lot of us restrict wealth to just monetary things. But the ability to see is wealth. The ability to use all of your senses is wealth. The ability to think, to learn, freedom, to set goals and achieve them, that's wealth. Knowledge is wealth. Allah says that all of these different types of wealth that you're given, there's going to be a, subtra a subtraction. Allah will take away some of it. So for some people, they suffer with this subtraction of wealth through their jobs. But they're extremely brilliant. Others, it's the opposite. So whatever that may mean to you, pay attention. Because Allah is testing you to see if you're going to show gratitude with what you still have instead of complaining with the little things Allah takes away from you and you don't have. Number four, وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ Allah will test you as the individual. Again, when you hear that, a lot of people interpret that, that this is something individually for me, restricted for me. No, ayyuhal ahbab, Allah may send somebody in front of you and test you through them. So Allah might put somebody or some or a group and they will be the hardship and the struggle in your life. For some people, it's particular groups. Others, it could be their spouse, it could be their children, it could be a community member. Whoever it is, Allah is saying to you, you're going to find hardship in this. Or it could just simply mean you. 
you wake up one day and you start coughing and you don't know why and you go to the doctor and you're diagnosed with some major problem. I once met a brother who suffered a headache. He was in the UK, suffered just a headache like any one of us. He took a couple Advils or aspirins and the headache wouldn't go away. By the end of the day, he went to the doctor. The doctors did an exam and they discovered there was a tumor growing in his brain. Three months later, the brother is dead. Allah will test you and you don't know how and where. And Allah will put certain individuals in your life, not to make your life painful, but to see throughout all of this heat, are you still attached to me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Fruits. There's two ways to look at this word. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm going to test you with fruits, meaning the, seed, the, the seeds that plant rizq in your life. The things, the foundations and fundamentals that you learn and you instill in others, that eventually prosper and grow, those are the fruits. So the education you give your children and see where that education goes, those are the fruits. Another way to look at this ayah is, fruits here literally means children that have passed away. Some of us may have children who have passed away. Allah calls them fruits. Because how do you feel when you see your kids? They are the joy of your life. You could have a really difficult day at work, but when you come home and you see your daughter, you see your son smiling at you, it makes you happy. When you see your daughter performing wudu for the first time in her life as a baby, and she comes beside you and she starts to pray, how do you feel? Tears of joy. Qurrata a'yun. Tears of joy. When you see your son, he puts on his little thobe but he comes to the masjid with daddy and he's holding his hand. How does it make you feel? When he's leading the first salah in front of the jama'ah, how do you feel as a parent? These are your thamara, these are your fruits. But Allah will snatch that away. He comes from a good family, she comes from a good family, but for some reason, the parents are disciplined, but the child went in a different direction. Allah will test you. So what do you do? Listen to the verse. وَالثَّمَرَاتِ the next verse is incredible to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Bashir literally means congratulations or glad tidings. Bashir is a verb that's used to take marbles and scatter them all over the floor. In other words, you're sending congratulations and good news to everyone. So Allah is saying now, congratulations to the people who are patient. Now just pause for a moment. I just told you, five areas Allah will instill hardship in our lives. But why would I congratulate you? Somebody just lost a son or a daughter and you go up to them and say, congratulations, you're so patient. That's not how we use patience. So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala congratulating or ordering His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa on the Day of Judgment, go and tell the people, congratulations, they are patient. Why? People ask all the time, what's the wisdom in hardship? The answer is in this verse. The thing that you're supposed to learn out of going through difficulty in your life, is you're supposed to learn to be more patient. And if that's the thing that you learnt out of whatever hardship you've gone through in your life, for Allah, He tells the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment, go up to that person and tell them congratulations because they did it. They learnt the lesson behind that struggle. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Who are they? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً Whenever a calamity struck them. You see, Musiba is like the man who has a bow and arrow and he lets go and always hits his target. Never misses. So even if the target is in front of them and he lets the bow and arrow go this direction, somehow it hits the target. That's what Musiba is. So Allah is telling you that regardless where you are, this struggle is going to come and is destined to you, but you're patient and one of the ways you can test that you have patience is you say, Inna lillah.
to I belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un and eventually I return to him. I conclude with this part of the ayah in the second part of the khutbah. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase us in patience. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the strength to get through our struggles in life. Whatever they may be, Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'u wa astaghfirullahari wa lakum. ورسائل المسلمين من كل ذم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا أما بعد. So you want to know if you really have patience in life? Anytime something difficult and terrible happens to you? Your first reaction is, I belong to Allah. In other words, you affirm that you yourself is owned by Allah. Why is that so important? Because it puts things into perspective. You know, if you buy a brand new car and you're driving it out of the dealership, and as you're driving it out of the dealership, you stop at the first traffic light and somebody hits you from behind. Because you have inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, it puts things into perspective and it calms you down. That you always accept Allah's qadr upon you. Now remember, some Muslims like to blame Allah for everything. When you say the qadr of Allah, it's only used for things you don't have control over. So if you go out into your car and there's a tornado coming your way, you don't say qadr of Allah. What you should have said is, I should have checked the weather before I went outside. If you can't wake up for fajr on time, you don't just say qadr of Allah. You should figure out how to set that alarm or get somebody to help wake you up for fajr. The things that we don't have control over, that's where you say qaddar of Allah. This is the will of Allah. I tried my best. I couldn't do anything about it. This is Allah's will upon me. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun. And eventually I will have to go back to Allah and be accountable for what I've done. Ayyuhal Ahbab, I conclude. Do you notice that this phrase is often used when somebody passes away. That's how most of us use inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Who did I tell you the audience of the surah was? The people of Medina. Are they alive or dead? They are very much alive. The ayah is speaking to people who are alive. Because this is a lifelong lesson you have to take. It's an attitude of life. That we don't own anything because we ourselves are owned by Allah. So now you start developing a sense of appreciation and gratitude. And you see things for what they are. When they happen to you, there's a sense of humility in your life, in your heart. I belong to Allah. Allah can do whatever He wants to me because He owns me. He owns my children, He owns my wealth, my security, my food, my rizq. Everything comes from Him. Can you imagine how your life would be when you have that attitude about everything? You're able to breathe and you're able to continue to push forward and focus on the things you need to do to please your Creator. And so brothers and sisters, I conclude, may Allah Azza wa Jal continue to rain upon us patience. In this day and age, we need it. I don't have to tell you what's happening in the world. But in 2016, going into the new year, we need more patience. We're being put through a grind and a test. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us strength. May Allah protect our sons and our daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our brothers and sisters who are going through the test of khawf of jur, of naqsim min al-amwal, and anfus, and thamarat. May Allah make it easy for all of them. There are brothers and sisters who are going through this test of these categories every single day of their life. May Allah give them strength. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and give them the reward that they deserve. On yawmul qiyamah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue 
to rain upon us patience. Allahumma ameen. These are the words that I leave you with. We send peace and blessings to our Rasul. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. Kama amarana subhanahu wa ta'ala fi tanzeeri. Inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. Allahumma aghfir al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahya'i minhum wa al-Amwat innaka qaribun sami'un mujibu al-Da'wat Allahumma innana nas'aluka al-Jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa na'udhu bika min al-Nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal Rabbana atina fi al-Dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وقمس